Welcome to the Details of Life. I'm your host, Marcus Wilson, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming back one more time. I sincerely appreciate it, and today, you're going to get some inside knowledge of a champion, Matt Suther, who is the president of Mocan Basketball. If you know anything about summer AU basketball, Mocan has won two out of the last four piece gym. So their their success is undeniable. And one of the things that they're really known for is their organization, their professionalism. If you ask any other AAU team, you ask college coaches, everyone says how serious they take the game. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. That's a very professional, high level compliment because they run things like a business. I mean, the culture, I think you guys are going to learn a lot about. We talked about that. I asked them, like, how do you get your guys to take it so serious? You know, when guys go on road trips, you see other teams and coaches going out and stuff and joking around. Man, they, they run it like a top-notch business should, and you're seeing the results of winning two out of the last four Peace Jams. If you recall, the, the first Peace Jam championship they had was outstanding team, Michael Porter Jr., Trey Young. I think the most recent one may not have had as big a names. Maybe they haven't had time to dis- establish their names yet, but still, the way they did it, is just really, really to be admired. And, and so I think you guys are going to learn a lot from listening to Matt. So without further ado, let's go ahead and time in with Mocan Basketball President Matt Suther. Like I just prefaced, ladies and gentlemen, today we have a special guest. Won two out of the last four Peace Jams in the Nike EYBL. Founder of Mocan, Matt Suther. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing good. How about you? Man, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for making the time to come on to Details of Life and we'll go ahead and get started. And you know, a lot of times there's a background story to why people got into the game and and how it started. So could you tell us how Mocan came about and when to get started and how you got your sponsorship deal? Yeah, for sure. I uh, started in 2004. Uh, I was two years removed from playing college basketball at UMKC here in Kansas City. Um, was going crazy. My first real experience being away from the game basketball had you know been everything to me growing up it was really my focus and everything I did uh, you know through my childhood and and through college and so um, I got involved a friend of mine got me involved with an eighth grade group at the local YMCA Um, had had no plans had no uh, you know had no intentions of of creating Mocan to the level it's been, uh, you know, it, it's excelled to today. It was just, you know, that one group of kids. And I took that group uh, through their 17U year. It th- I think it was uh, 2000, uh, 2007 or 2008. We had had some, some success with that group on a national level, uh, n- not shoe affiliated. Um, and I had met Todd Hensley and, and, and Todd at that point offered to bring us up under his umbrella. I guess that you could call, call that our first kind of, sponsorship deal he, he provided a lot of support for us if it wasn't for Todd and Spies you know we wouldn't be sitting here today um, and, and the year after the UIBO was created they did a play-in tournament and the team that won the play-in tournament was going to get a one-year contract into the UIBO um, so we went to that event it was uh, it was in Indianapolis um, I don't think Nike or anybody thought we would win that event uh, we ended up winning that event on the last second shot by Shimmy Ojale who now plays for the Boston Celtics um, and got that contract that year. So pretty interesting story and something, you know, we look back on a lot and laugh at this point. Man, that's crazy. So for the people out there that don't know, so Todd Hensley and I played on a 15U AU team. His father, Bill Hensley, a legend, started Speech Jeansman. Anybody from Indiana remembers that name. And so Todd now runs Indy Heat. So it just goes to show, man, the basketball world is small, and it's good to see that people stuck together and kind of gave you your – your platform, and you've definitely taken off with it. I remember when Mocan won their first EYBL championship. I believe it was with uh, the Trey Young and Michael Porter Jr. group. And it was so. what was so amazing about it was you guys didn't just get lucky and, and beat some, some underground teams. I mean, no teams in the EYBL underground teams, but you beat PSA Cardinals from New York and Cal Supreme out of California, man. And, and here's this little small team out of – Missouri, Kansas, they came in and did their thing, man. So you've definitely earned it the right way. And with that said, there's a lot of people that don't know about AU basketball. They're, they're like, you know, they hear headlines here and there. And usually, you know, they hear negative headlines. But a lot of people use AU. A lot of kids use it for their platform to prepare for college, to get them a college scholarship. It's the best place to get exposure and, and all these things. So what was some of the main reasons that you got into the game and how do you see like AAU helping young kids today? Yeah, I mean, 
A, you was such a vital part. Um, and, and obviously, A, you is just a term that everybody uses. But, um, you know, it's such a vital part of these guys' development. Um, you know, but high school basketball is a vital part. You know, the, the skill development piece that has gotten so big is a vital part. I mean, all these things go together to, you know, it's kind of pieces of the puzzle for a guy that, that has aspirations of being an elite basketball player. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing that can replace the, the, the environment, the atmosphere, the things the kids learn in the EYBL. You know, it, it, most of these kids come from environments where they're by far and away the best player on their high school team. And so, you know, something they're going to experience in college is they're going to have to learn to play with other really good players. And, you know, that's one of the biggest things the EYBL does for these kids. It, it, it puts them in an environment where, where most of the kids are if good, are as good, if not better, as they are. And they have to kind of find their way through that. You know, for some kids, that they flourish immediately in that environment and they do really well. For other kids, they don't do as well. But even for those kids, I, I've maybe seen as much, if not more, of an impact on those kids because it gives those kids perspective and in most cases, those kids go and work because they realize, hey, you know, I'm not as good as people are telling me or I'm not as good as I think I am. So right. the perspective has driven so many of our kids to go back and get get to work and become, you know, the player that they've become. I can see that because I've been, as you know, I've been to your uh, been to your camps a little bit and seen the tryouts and seen the, the beginning of it, of just when you bring the guys in and for the for the workouts. And one thing I know is I've, I've talked to a lot of college coaches and I've talked to other uh, AAU programs. And one thing that Mocan is known for is just your professionalism, like how serious you guys take the game. Like it's, it's not just, oh, we're just hooping this summer. Like it's, it, it's as close to college as you can get. How do you develop that culture to where your coaches, your, your, your players are taking it so serious and are so bought in? Like you said, man, it, it's it's all about the culture. Um, you know, no great organization is great without great culture. Our coaches um, understand what's at stake for these kids. Um, you know, there's so many of our kids that that basketball is the vehicle that is going to create opportunities in their life, like like it did for me, like it did for you, like it did for so many people that we know. Um, so we take that very seriously, and 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 we try to be really intentional about. Um, you know, not just not just creating a platform where these guys can get exposure, but kids have to be in environments where they're uncomfortable and they're held accountable so that they know how to fight through that stuff. And and we try really hard to put them in that environment before they get to the college level so that they can have success. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, that, that definitely makes sense. And I've seen it work for you. Obviously, you're winning Peace Jams, you know, and two out of the last four. But I, another question I'm really interested in asking you about, Matt, is I see a lot of AU programs all across the country. And one of the, one of the issues that they have is sometimes developing, getting the right coaches in their program. And so you, you have high school coaches, you have college coaches as a part of your staff. Is, are you intentional about engaging high school coaches or does it sometimes make it difficult? Because I've seen in other programs where the high school coaches start recruiting players from other teams and then it causes some strife within it. How do you manage that? And how do you, you know, go out and intentionally engage coaches to be a part of your program? Yeah. I mean, uh, I'd say 95% of the coaches we've had in the program over the years coach for a living, meaning they're high school coaches or they're small college coaches. To me, that, that is such a vital piece of what you're providing for the kids is how these guys go about operating the practice settings, operating how we travel and, and, and guys that do it for a living, you know, that's, that's, they're, they're professionals at that. As, as, as far as, you know, the, the, the dynamics of um, the fear of a high school coach within the program, you know, recruiting kids away that, don't, that aren't in their program. I mean, I think that comes back to culture, right? Like um, th there aren't going to be guys in our program for very long that are about those things. So, you know, mm -hmm. they know they're there to, to give the kids, um, the things that, that, that we're trying to give them not to recruit for their program. And so, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be naive and say it's never happened in the 16 years that the program's existed. But if it happens and, and we find out about it, we nip it in the bud pretty quickly. So, Like I said, I, I do know the culture you guys have over there. So, you, like I said, you're doing something right. Now for the people that are just tuning in and, and you know, I know about MoCan because I'm 
in the basketball world. I'm in Missouri and you guys are right there. But for the people that don't know who are just tuning in, what are some of the, the, the things that you guys have accomplished over the years in terms of pros that you guys uh, have made and how many guys, coaches on your staff who have maybe went on to the next level, all Americans, maybe, you know, scholarship dollars that you've produced over the years. Do you have some highlights that you can tell the average listener about the impact that you've had across for players and coaches? Put me on the spot with numbers, man. <laughs> well, um, but I know we, uh, you know, off the top of my head, uh, you know, we've got – I know we've got 29 guys playing professionally now. Eight of those guys are in the NBA. Um, we've had six All-Americans. The scholarship assistance is at over $30 million now. We've had over 150 guys uh, that have got college scholarships. Um, McDonald's All-Americans, USA Basketball, all that stuff. Obviously, you know, um, we've had guys that have got the opportunity to do those things. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it, we're very proud of those things. Um, but, but we're proud of the kids because obviously they're talented kids, but, but they put in the work that it takes um, to get those, to get those opportunities. So, uh, you know, extremely proud of our alums for sure. Man, you're, you're being real humble right now. I mean, you, anybody out there that's watching right now, I recommend you go to their website, look at some of the things they've accomplished. Uh, he, he's being very humble right now, which is a good thing, but mo- moving on, I, I did want to ask you about AU basketball. Like you said, it's AU, whatever you want to call it. You know, there's three main circuits and there's some other independent teams and some other circuits that are coming up right now. But, you know, it's EYBL, Adidas, Under Armour primarily. And so if yep. there was a kid trying to decide, do I play for Mocan or do I play on the EYBL? What are some of the reasons that you think that someone should play for your team? Or, or even why would they choose the EYBL over another, over another league? From a, from a league or circuit standpoint, um, it, it, it's – there's no comparison with the UIBL and the other circuits. Um, you know, I think it's, it's over 85% of the top 100 every year on average are in the UIBL. Um, a huge percentage of the NBA draft over the past couple of years. And at that point, you're talking about the world. You're just not talking about the UIBL over other shoe circuits. It, it, it's coming from the UIBL. I think six out of the 10 uh, kids in last year's NCAA tournament on every team on average were from the UIBL. So, you know, it's just it's, – it's the best of the best, and, and, and iron sharpens iron. So if you say you want to be a lead and you want to test yourself against the best and you want to put yourself on a platform where if you do well, you know, there's endless opportunities, it's, it's, it's not even close. Um, now, with that being said, I would never, never sit here and say if a kid doesn't play in the EYBL, he doesn't have an opportunity to, you know, to go to a good school or to make it to the NBA one day. You know, that, that, that's, that's obviously not true, but, but – you know, it, it is the best of the best that there is to offer in grassroots basketball. And we, we talk to kids all the time about you want to be the best, you got to play against the best. Um, you know, in terms of what separates Mocan, we're very, very um, intentional about, you know, being real with kids and holding them accountable and putting them in competitive environments that allow them to not only have, su- have success in basketball, but also in life. Um, you know, we, we want these guys to be in an environment where uh, it matters if you win or lose because that's that's the reality that, that you and I face every day, right? Um, it, it drives me crazy when, when people go to an environment where it's not about winning, where it's not about being held accountable, where it's about just kind of rolling out the ball and letting them do what they want because, you know, they may think they're having success in the moment, but but long-term that's setting them up for failure. So, um, you know, that's that's one of the biggest things that – that, that we try to stress to, to the kids that are coming in into our program is, hey, you know, we're, we're trying to set you up for the future. This isn't just about right now. This is about making you feel good right now. you got to go through some pain right now to eventually reach your goals. So uh, that, that, that's kind of the, the message we try to send. Man, you hit the nail on the head with that, which leads me to my next question. I see a lot of – and I think this is a product of sponsorship deals. So I understand that this is a tough question, but – some I see some AAU programs, they only focus on getting ranked players because mm-hmm. you know if you get ranked players, you're going to get a, you're going to get a deal. That's just the way it works these days. And some teams are a lot more focused on winning, right? How do you balance that uh, chemistry of trying to get top 100 ranked players to make sure that you continue getting your you know your deal versus also putting together a good team that is a like complimentary team that, that that is built to win how do you how do you balance doing that 
Um, you know, that's, that's obviously a challenge uh, for everybody in our world. Um, I, I do not focus a bunch on rankings. Um, we're, we're going to, to focus on and look at uh, the most talented kids in our area in, in the states that, that touch us. Uh, but, but we're looking for kids that, that wanted to be, want to be in an environment like I just talked about. Um, and, and there are a lot of kids that want to be in that environment. And so um, even though I don't necessarily focus that much on rankings, you know, if, if you get talented kids, you put them in a culture and an environment that helps them get better you know, to reach his potential and what do we need to do to help him reach his potential? And, 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 you know, also what does the team need to do to reach its potential? Because when we look back on every team that we've had, that's had a, a large amount of success as a team, each of those kids individually on that team get more. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's just, that's just something, you know, we, we, we try to focus on both and it's, it's getting the most and, and, and uh, the best out of every kid that we have and also what's, what's best for the team. And so they've kind of naturally worked together. Well, whatever you're doing, you're making it work. Because, like I said, you're always one of the best teams in the EYBL. But speaking of the EYBL, you know, it's been kind of taken away from us this summer because of COVID-19. And I know there's some things, there's some other opportunities to play. But how has this imp impacted you this summer? And what are some of the things you're doing with the MoCAM program without the EYBL circuit? Yeah, it, it, it's been tough, especially for seniors to be um, – you know, these guys have worked so hard to get to this point in their career. And now, you know, they're not getting the opportunity to be on that platform. Um, you know, th this is a time where, you know, relationships are huge. And because of all the success that our kids for the past 16 years have had in college, it, it creates, you know, a level of influence that we, we have with our staff that we can reach out and, and continue to try to get our kids opportunities and looks but you know on top of that we're going to do a mini camp in July uh, knock on wood that everything still is able to go through and run smoothly um, where we're going to do a, a lot of live streaming and, and, and collect film that we can send out to coaches but um, you know nothing could replace the platform of the UIB on those opportunities they have so we're just trying to be really proactive in terms of keeping you know our kids uh, in front of these coaches and giving them opportunities to be seen. Yeah, man, it's good to hear that you're still doing your part to help get these kids exposure and the ultimate goal is getting them to college and, and playing for free. So even though we won't be able to see you guys playing in like the, the great facility down in Atlanta and all that and with the EYBL, who are some of the guys that we could expect to see with MoCan this summer? I mean, do you already have your roster set and – who are some of the guys that we might recognize where somebody can look and say, yeah, I know that kid. He's a top ranked kid. Who are some of your stars that are playing with MoCan this summer? Yeah, absolutely. We've, we've, we've had our teams form since, since February and we've actually been doing weekly zoom calls with the teams where we've still been, cause you know, this, this thing has just continued to progress. So we didn't know initially that the whole EYBL season was going to be canceled. You know, it kind of went phases. One, one session was canceled then another session was canceled and the entire season was canceled canceled and you know we're still hopeful that there's going to be some NCAA live periods that happen so we've we've kept our teams engaged we do weekly zoom calls we're still going over you know defensive rules and principles and and, and trying to go over some playbook stuff and showing them uh you know showing them film of of execution things and we've been getting a lot of our alums on the phone on the zoom calls to talk about you know how hard the guys need to work and things to focus on and so um you know, probably the three top-ranked guys on our 17U team this year would have been Kennedy Chandler, who was the point guard on last year's EYBL championship team, number one point guard in the country. Um, Bryce Hopkins, uh, he is uh, currently committed to Louisville. He's one of the top top forwards in the country. Um, and then Kendall Brown, who, who uh, is, is undecided where he's going right now, but uh, is also uh, one of the top top five wings in the country. So, so those three guys, um, you know, would have uh, would have been our, our our most highly ranked guys, and you know it, it was really disappointing because um, you know we felt like we had built a team that had an opportunity to to potentially go back to back, which no team has ever done. So yeah. um, that's disappointing, but but we we have to continue to to focus on trying to do what we can do for the guys. There's there's so many guys on that team outside of those other those three that um, are, are are definitely Division one players, um, and, and I know would have would have gotten those opportunities had the EYBL happened as, as normal. But, but you know, they'll, they'll get their shot and they'll get their opportunity. We're working hard to try to make that happen. 
Definitely, man. Mocan has never put out a bad product. So you guys are going to be competitive. And from the names you just dropped, yeah, you guys definitely had a chance to repeat. Man, thank you for spending a lot of time with me. I'm going to close up here. But for, for the people that are watching and wondering, how do you get this talent? How do you keep this level of success? What are some of the things that you guys do to help develop your guys both on the court and off the court? Do you, do, uh, do you help them do skill workouts? Do you help them academically? What are some of the things you do to help develop your players to be the overall uh, college-ready player? Yeah, I, I, I think from a skill development point, it goes back to something I've said a lot through this call. It's being real with the guys, right? Like, uh, yeah, providing skill development opportunities, but also being real with them on, on their weaknesses and, and, and being intentional about telling them, like, look, these are the things next time we see you that, that we need to see improvement on. And, and uh, some guys go and do a bunch of that on their own with their trainers. Some guys were actively involved in that piece of it. It just kind of depends on the kid and their environment. But, um, you know, it's just constant motivation. Um, from that standpoint of, of, of keeping that in front of them. From an academic standpoint, we're very involved. Um, we've got 100% high school graduation rate in the 16 years we've been doing it. And, um, you know, that a lot of our kids have gone to high schools that have 60% or less graduation rates. So um, also we try to try to identify really early at-risk kids um, because graduating from your high school and, and, and qualifying for Division One academically are two very different things. And so um, we try to get very involved early on and, and make sure that we have them on track to have the opportunity to qualify for Division One. You know, every kid's different. Every situation's different. So we, you can't treat every situation the same. And so we try to dig into each situation and provide what's needed for each guy individually. That's good stuff, man. It's great to hear that you helping them both on the court and off the court. So I'm sure there's somebody watching right now that's like, man, I really want to know more about this club. I like this guy. I like the success and what they're doing. So for the people out there, can you tell them how to follow you, social media handles, websites? How can they find out more about MoCan? Yeah, uh, our website is MoCanBasketball.com. Um, our Instagram is at MoCan Elite. And our Twitter is at Mocan Basketball. Okay. Um, so, you know, and there's links to all of that on our website. And, and, and our website gives, gives a bunch of in-depth information about us. We try to keep that really up to date. Um, so, Man, like I said, man, there, there, there's not too many other teams in the country that have done what you've done. So I appreciate you spending time with me today, man. And good luck to you this summer. And we don't know what's going to happen the rest of the summer, but for sure we'll be back on the court seeing you next summer. So good luck to you and, and everything you're doing, Matt. All right, Marcus. Appreciate you. All right, man. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Matt, for coming on and really appreciate you giving that time and knowledge to us. Good luck to you whenever we get back on the court with AAU ball once this kind of pandemic hopefully, you know, subsides a little bit and we'll be able to see you back on the court. You always put on a quality and high level team. So looking forward to seeing that when we are able to get back in, into competing. Moving forward, guys, this is not going to stop. We're going to be talking to some of the best directors and the best teams all across the country. Like I said, whether you're a student athlete, whether you're a parent, whether you're a college coach, whether you're another AAU team, everybody has something to learn from these guys because they, they impact so many different people in different ways. Obviously, the student athletes they're bringing on, parents learning how – a good AAU team should think. College coaches wanting to know more about the programs they're recruiting from. Other AAU teams trying to figure out what they're doing well and what they can learn from, from these other teams. So, man, I'm really excited to keep this going. Make sure you tune in because everyone kind of does the big things, right? Everyone can show up to the tournament. Everyone can pick a team. But what are the details that allow you to be successful, to be champions, and to be great? You got to listen to the details because you know what? That's right. Greatness is in the details, guys. Make sure you come back next week. We're going to have another high-level program, another director giving the knowledge. So make sure you guys tune back in. Can't wait to see you. Have a great week. Peace.